A hundred and fifteen. The pen of revelation, O Zabi, hath in most of the divinely revealed tablets recorded these words. We have admonished all the loved ones of God to take heed lest the hem of our sacred vesture be smirched with the mire of unlawful deeds or be stained with the dust of reprehensible conduct. We have moreover exhorted them to fix their gaze upon whatsoever hath been revealed in our tablets. Had their inner ears been attentive to the divine counsels, which have shone forth from the dayspring of the pen of the All-Merciful, and hearkened unto his voice, most of the peoples of the earth would have by now been adorned with the ornament of his guidance. What had been preordained, however, hath come to pass. Once again doth the tongue of the Ancient of Days reveal while in this most great prison these words which are recorded in this snow-white scroll. O ye the beloved of the one true God, pass beyond the narrow retreats of your evil and corrupt desires and advance into the vast immensity of the realm of God and abide ye in the meads of sanctity and of detachment, that the fragrance of your deeds may lead the whole of mankind to the ocean of God's unfading glory. Forbear ye from concerning yourselves with the affairs of this world and all that pertaineth unto it, or from meddling with the activities of those who are its outward leaders. The one true God, exalted be his glory, hath bestowed the government of the earth upon the kings. To none is given the right to act in any manner that would run counter to the considered views of them who are in authority. That which he hath reserved for himself are the cities of men's hearts, and of these the loved ones of him who is the sovereign truth are in this day as the keys. Please God they may, one and all, be enabled to unlock through the power of the most great name the gates of these cities. This is what is meant by aiding the one true God, a theme to which the pen of him who causeth the dawn to break hath referred in all his books and tablets. It behoveth likewise the loved ones of God to be forbearing towards their fellow men, and to be so sanctified and detached from all things, and to evince such sincerity and fairness, that all the peoples of the earth may recognize them as the trustees of God amongst men. Consider to what lofty heights the injunctions of the Almighty have soared and how abject is the habitation wherein these feeble souls are now abiding. Blessed are they who on the wings of certitude have flown in the heavens which the pen of thy Lord, the All-Merciful, hath spread. Behold, O Zabi, the works which God the Sovereign Truth hath wrought. Say thou, how great, how very great, is the power of his might that encompasseth all worlds. Exalted, immeasurably exalted, is his detachment above the reach and ken of the entire creation. Glorified, glorified be his meekness, a meekness that hath melted the hearts of them that have been brought nigh unto God. Though afflicted with countless tribulations which we have suffered at the hands of our enemies, we have proclaimed unto all the rulers of the earth what God hath willed to proclaim, that all nations may know that no manner of affliction can deter the pen of the Ancient of Days from achieving its purpose. His pen moveth by the leave of God, who fashioneth the crumbling and rotten bones.
considering this most mighty enterprise, it beseemeth them that love him to gird up the loins of their endeavour and to fix their thoughts on whatever will ensure the victory of the cause of God rather than commit vile and contemptible deeds. Wert thou to consider for but a little while the outward works and doings of him who is the eternal truth, thou wouldst fall down upon the ground and exclaim, O thou who art the Lord of lords, I testify that thou art the Lord of all creation and the educator of all beings, visible and invisible. I bear witness that thy power hath encompassed the entire universe and that the hosts of the earth can never dismay thee, nor can the dominion of all peoples and nations deter thee from executing thy purpose. I confess that thou hast no desire except the regeneration of the whole world and the establishment of the unity of its peoples and the salvation of all them that dwell therein. Reflect a while and consider how they who are the loved ones of God must conduct themselves and to what heights they must soar. Beseech thou at all times thy Lord, the God of mercy, to aid them to do what he willeth. He verily is the most powerful, the all-glorious, the all-knowing. The imprisonment inflicted on this wronged one, O Zabi, did to him no harm, nor can it ever do so. Nor can the loss of all his earthly goods, his exile, or even his martyrdom and outward humiliation do him any hurt. That which can hurt him are the evil deeds which the beloved of God commit, and which they impute to him who is the sovereign truth. This is the affliction from which I suffer, and to this he himself, who is potent over all things, beareth me witness. That which hath sorely hurt me are the claims which the people of the Bayan are advancing every day. Some have proclaimed their allegiance to one of my branches, sons, while others have asserted independently their claims and acted after their own desires. O Zabi, the tongue of grandeur saith, By myself that speaketh the truth, in this most mighty revelation, all the dispensations of the past have attained their highest and final consummation. Whoso layeth claim to a revelation after him such a man is assuredly a lying impostor. We pray God that he may graciously assist him to retract and repudiate such claim. Should he repent, God will no doubt forgive him. If, however, he persisteth in his error, God will assuredly send down one who will deal mercilessly with him. He verily is the Almighty the most powerful. Behold how the people of the Bayan have utterly failed to recognize that the sole object of whatsoever my previous manifestation and harbinger of my beauty hath revealed hath been my revelation and the proclamation of my cause. Never, and to this he who is the sovereign truth beareth me witness, would he have but for me pronounced what he did pronounce. Witness how this foolish people have treated the cause of him who is the all-possessing, the inaccessible, as a play and pastime. Their hearts devise each day a new device, and their fancy leadeth them to seek a fresh retreat. If what they say be true, how then can the stability of the cause of thy Lord be ensured? Ponder this in thine heart, and be thou of them who are sharp-sighted, who scan heedfully, who are steadfast in their purpose and confident in their belief. Such should be thy certitude, that if all mankind were to advance such claims 
as no man hath ever advanced or any mind conceived, thou wouldst completely ignore them, wouldst cast them from thee, and wouldst set thy face towards him who is the object of the adoration of all worlds. By the righteousness of mine own self, great, immeasurably great is this cause, mighty, inconceivably mighty is this day. Blessed indeed is the man that hath forsaken all things and fastened his eyes upon him whose face hath shed illumination upon all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth. Sharp must be thy sight, O Zabi, and adamant thy soul, and brass-like thy feet, if thou wishest to be unshaken by the assaults of the selfish desires that whisper in men's breasts. This is the firm injunction which the pen of the most great name hath by virtue of the will of the ancient king been moved to reveal. Keep it as the apple of thine eye, and be thou of the thankful. Strive thou day and night to serve the cause of him who is the eternal truth, and be thou detached from all else but him. By myself, whatever thou seest in this day shall perish. Supremely lofty will be thy station if thou remainest steadfast in the cause of thy Lord. Towards him are thy busy movements directed, and in him is thy final resting place.